ASL Season 17 uh, is starting pretty soon. The qualifiers are going to be coming up. They have announced the map pool. So I wanted to go over that here. Uh, uh, some of the maps you've seen before, so I'm going to start with some of those. Okay, let's start off with Dark Origin. Okay, so it's a two-player map. We have those two as your bases. Uh, I think everyone has seen this and kind of remembers this map. Uh, a few things to know is, of course, you still have this back area uh, that has the mineral patch that you can hop things over. Generally, you're going to see zealots hop there. You could sometimes see drones coming up to mine that uh, to go ahead and, and kind of force like a rush through there. It's not used that often. You can kill that little structure back there as well. Uh, you know, the, the main things about this map uh, are these bridges here on both sides, right? It's very hard to get armies over there. So what you're going to see is whatever race has, uh, you know, map control is going to have a containment there. So, like, if if you're Protoss versus Terran, you'll just have a, a giant army kind of standing in this general area, and then you can't really come over the bridges. Uh, same thing if you're Protoss and you're playing against Zerg, they're going to have units at those bridges as well for tvz it's a little bit more complicated a lot of mutilisk micro will happen from the edges at those bridges uh a couple things uh some matchup specific things right like it doesn't have that many bases right so it's like okay here's one two three four that's generally how the first four get taken and then theoretically you'd have like a five somewhere which might be here or it might be up here but that five in a lot of matchups just will not get taken, okay? It's much more likely, like in Zerg versus Protoss, you probably see Zerg end up trying to take those bases. In Terran versus Protoss, you'll see Protoss try to take those bases. Uh, but yeah, this map, we've had it before. We've seen it. It has pretty reasonable games, I would say. Uh, but it's it's kind of a tough map. Um, it, it definitely has some, some racial imbalance. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, definitely, like, not a very good map for Terran players. I don't know exactly where it's going to be as far as, like, when they're going to make people play it. They haven't announced that yet. But anyways, uh, that is Neo Dark Origin. Let's go on to the next one. Uh, up next, we have Apocalypse. Now, Apocalypse is a three-player map. One, two, three. And, yeah, it's, it, it's a map that's been on ladder. It was in the last season. Uh... You know, it's kind of like, uh, I think it's a pretty good Terran map overall. You know, it's three players, so you don't just get offensive gas necessarily every single game. Uh, so that's nice. Also, you have a three base setup that's very hard to attack into. So you have one there, you have two there, you have three there, right? And then you only have to defend this area and this little tiny ramp. And so basically anything that you set up here will end up holding, like for instance, Terran versus Protoss. Against Zerg, it becomes kind of strong. Like Zerg generally, let's say that this is the Zerg base down here, okay? Uh, let's say that this is the Zerg base right there, right? So they'll take their natural, obviously, but it's not likely that they will take this base as their third because if they take that as their third, Terran can just sit up here and that's no good, right? So Zerg more likely to take something like this one Maybe this one, maybe this one, something like that uh, for that matchup. As far as Zerg versus Protoss goes, we've seen that it's really evolved into Zerg generally containing. Let's say that Zerg is this base over here, okay? This this base on the right-hand side. So they, they will take these bases against Protoss, and then they'll contain here. And it's very hard for Protoss to push up into Lurkers in that area, right? Also, we've seen a lot of drop play that has been figured out to be very strong here, right? So you can actually load your overlords up from your rally points and just drop it in the main base very quickly. So that does make it a little bit tough, I think, for Protoss uh, in that regard. But the third base is pretty close by. So I feel like most of the games on Apocalypse I've seen ZVP, uh, we do see Protoss getting those three bases. And as long as they can take this high ground, they're in pretty good shape. But if a good contain gets up there, it gets very, very difficult. Uh, but yeah, I think Apocalypse is a pretty good map. People seem to like it. And I don't, I don't think I have any big complaints balance wise. It's like, you know, there's, there's like a lot of options for every race to play on that map. So I think it's actually a pretty reasonable map. Another map coming back is going to be Retro. Uh, obviously it's a four player map. We've seen this one for a while. 
And uh, this is just a remake of Fighting Spirit. You know, I've talked about this in a lot of casts before, right? So it's got like the one, two, three base layout. Uh, but the third base is a lot harder for your opponent really to deny, right? Uh, it, when you look at Fighting Spirit, it was like too basic uh, where this base would actually be like, see the distance basically, let's say Protoss is here. Like the, these bases and Terran is the, are these bases. This third base is take one. Fighting Spirit, that wouldn't have been the case, right? Because if you look at the travel distance, it is a little bit to get there. Whereas the distance to the third on Fighting Spirit would probably be about there. And then also this area is kind of compact and the travel distance from here to attacking in the other direction is very far for Protoss. So that's what was really abused a lot in Fighting Spirit that hasn't occurred here. Uh, one of the interesting things, because we have to we have to look kind of like in the map to Fighting Spirit, because it is similar. It is just a 12 base map, but it's actually 13 because you have the mineral patches in the center here. Uh, and the mineral patches in the center are really interesting because first off, all this terrain around it is, uh, is buildable, right? So you can throw a command center nexus hatchery there. You can put missile turrets or whatever. Uh, but also the way it divides the map, right? This is an important aspect of this map. The distance from the mineral patches to everywhere else are not huge. Like this general area is large, but the distance isn't that big. So you can actually utilize the minerals and be like, okay, I defend here and I defend here. And the map is cut almost in half at that point. So just something to mention, but it is a low resource map. This is the type of map where you're only gonna see people max out one time, uh, very likely in a game where you are the player that's con like doesn't have map control. So for Terran versus Protoss, you'll probably see Terran max out one time. Uh, Protoss versus Zerg, you probably see Protoss max out one time. Obviously different things can happen, but it's that type of way where it's like, okay, well, I mean, maybe you can get a four base quadrant, right? Like this one this one this one this one right but that might be about it and depending on what your opponent is doing it might be very hard to hold one of those bases like arbiters would shut that down uh you know if zerg gets into hive you're not going to be able to hold all that you're gonna have to do a lot of roaming that type of thing but retro has been a pretty good map so far i think it's given us good games not surprised to see it back uh and i i do like the addition of the four the four player 12 base maps because we've had 16 base maps for so long and it really changes the feel of the game significantly so happy to have that one back as well all right now uh let's go and look at a returning map one of the worst maps ever made troy uh troy is a fevered dream of a map okay this is this is terran hell this is uh, like things can go so wrong on Troy. Okay, so it's a four player map. One, two, three, four. But, and here's the thing too. It's close. It's a small map. It's actually a very small map. This rush distance is not very much, right? So like you can actually attack your opponent pretty damn quickly. Now it has these double geysers. Okay, at each base, and it has them at the side bases, okay? If you kill one geyser, the Hydralisk is the biggest unit that can walk through. If you kill both geysers, only a ghost can make it through. No one uses ghosts. It's a joke, but they do actually fit. Uh, but yeah, nothing can fit through at that point. So your main base becomes an island, right? So how does this occur? Well, we, I think it's likely we're going to see uh, Protoss players sometimes go to Gateway on this map, right? And I think that's going to like kind of force maybe Hatch first from, from Zerg to try to have enough Larva to deal with that. Because again, if you kill these the simulators, your opponent's basically dead because they're sitting on one base and they can't get out. Uh, you can see those killed off by Mutalisks in Terran versus Zerg. You can absolutely by Carriers. I think with the new styles that we're seeing, you know, these crazy Speed Shuttle Reaver styles, we could maybe see a Protoss player bomb in and try to just target those down. Because again, like that's almost a win condition. It's super, super, super close to a win condition. Uh, because once you kill that off, let's say that I have seven facts in here. Okay, seven factories producing and I'm playing a nice macro game. Maybe I have this base, this base, this base. 
and Protoss is over here. Well, they could sacrifice three shuttles of crap and just kill one assimilator. And you'd think that's bad, but drop ships, you can't just drop ship out your units to go attack your opponent. Like you don't have drop ships, you don't have a lot of them anyways, even if you do. So it's like literally very close to a win condition. If you kill these and stop one push, you should have won as Protoss. So I think that might turn into a problem. They do have a little bit of counterplay with the fact that you have an expansion that's an island right next to your base. Like, so for instance, uh, you could, I don't know, float a command center down there quickly, something like that, right? So maybe maybe there could be some counterplay in that regard. Uh, but yeah, a lot of this map can just focus on it, this short rush, rush distance and the fact that you can kill those assimilators. There's not, there's just not a lot of counterplay there. So yeah, kind of crazy that Troy's back. That's going to be like the insane map this season, right? Like we always get one map that's completely batshit insane. Troy is that here. Okay, we have a remake of an old map this season. It's called Blitz Y. This is a remake of Blitz X. Blitz X was a very popular map in 2005, 2004, 2005 in that era. So Blitz X, and this is super, super uh, clever names. Blitz X was horizontal. It was literally exactly this map, but horizontal, and this is vertical. So it's like Y axis versus X axis. I appreciate the, the fucking play on words here, but Blitz Y is a two player map. So you have one and two, and it's kind of funny. Uh, let's take a look at this map. I don't think this is gonna be a good map this season. I think this is gonna be an insanely Protoss map. So let's take a look. I'm gonna outline what the base looks like just so you understand this. And here's the ramp, okay? So when you have a base like this, that is huge, look at the distance down, okay? And what is this near? Your opponent's base is here, okay? So this is a big, big, big issue. Drops, like the shuttle style that we see, in Protoss first Terran, incredibly strong, okay? Uh, Zerg drops, let's say that Zerg has taken this base against Protoss. You drop in here, you know how long it's gonna take to get an army from here to there? An insane amount of time. It's really, really, really far away. Obviously something like carriers are gonna be unbeatable here. Uh, you have these expansions down here. Now, they do have mineral patches, so you can't just float a command center. You have to drop a worker down there uh, and mine those minerals to be able to expand. But that is three bases that can't be attacked by... Well, they can kind of be attacked by ground. Like, this one here is so close that you could hit it. Like, you could hit miners with dragoons or lurkers. Obviously, a siege tank can kill this base. Uh, these two, not so much on the side. Another interesting thing here. First off, in two-player maps, we almost always... Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna clear that whiteboard just to make this a little bit clearer. The maybe the craziest thing, right? I already showed the main base and the crazy shape of that. But we actually on two player maps, if you have a starting base that's here, your other starting base will be here. And then you can just make it like you know, uh, symmetric in, in across that line. And it's kind of like, okay, well, you have a lot of interesting play all over the place. Here having it be uh, the two corners that are like vertical from each other. We almost never have two player maps like this. Uh, the last one we had was butter. So they have been trying to like mix these in a little bit, but what you should look at for this situation is the base that's really far away. Imagine a Starcraft game, right? You have one player that's up here and one player that's here. When this base gets taken, it is so far away from anything else happening on the map this is almost an invincible base. Think about trying to clear that base. Like it is it is going to be kind of crazy. Like, uh, let's see, how do we get there? Okay, well, I mean, I guess we can go up this ramp. We can go down here. We go through the middle. We go down here and then down this little corridor and ah, oh, we can attack. Well, guess what? Every other route on the map is faster than this. So any time that you might actually try to send enough units to kill a base like that, counterattacks can just go like anywhere of value, right? Like it, it just, it's wild. So that's gonna be like kind of a funny base. Uh, there is one other thing I should point out for this map. The scout slash rush distance is pretty 
reasonably fast because it goes through a tiny corridor. This here, this is how wide this is. This is about three siege tanks wide, I guess. Right, three big units wide. So it's not very wide. This is an area you can defend super, super, super easily. Uh, any sort of splash damage will destroy it here, whether it's siege tanks, Psy Storm, Reaver, Lurker, anything like that will cut off the short rush distance. And from there, you have to start walking way around to do anything, and you have to go up ramps to attack at that point. So there are definitely like this, this map favors air for sure. There's just, it's, it's so crazy to try to do anything else. Okay, so Blitz Y, a remake. All right, now on to our new maps. We have two new maps that are gonna be played this season and they're good. They're really good. Let's take a look. Uh, first off, we have Citadel. This is a four player map. And I gotta tell you, I think that they did a great job designing this map. This is a very interesting new map. I, uh, like, I don't know if this is based off of another map. It doesn't remind me too much of anything. It kind of looks old school, honestly. If you look at, if you look at like these weird temple foundations in the, in the center of the map, this reminds, like I play a lot of the old maps in, in chat FFAs and stuff. So it kind of reminds me of that, right? Uh, it, those are, I don't know. It's just, it's got a weird older feel in that regard. Now, uh, let's talk about what makes this map kind of special. Okay. So let me show you a base layout. Let's look at the top, right? Okay. So if this is your spawning base, this is your natural. This is the close third that has a gas. This is a base in the center of the map that is close by. So you could theoretically take. Okay. So that might be your four base. Four quadrant bases is like a Terran player, okay? Always looking at that Terran lens. Now, one thing I, I should really mention here, if you look at this, if you look at this general area right there, okay? Here, let me clear this again to, to point this out. This is low ground. This is low ground, okay? This is a ramp. The ramp is like one unit wide. So there is technically high ground there. So there is, from here, you cannot see into the main. From here, you cannot see into the natural. This is high ground. Okay, so it's like a little tiny hill, not buildable. It's super, super, super tiny. There are two eggs here. So you can do things like put zealots there, right? And hold, a, or SCVs against a, a zergling rush or zealots against a zergling rush. You know, that type of thing. So it's a very weird ramp. And they've done this all over the map, right? This right here, also a ramp like that. Also a ramp like that. These, wider, but also similar ramps where it's like, this is a ramp that, that changes it, but it's not this huge area of high ground that's going to be, you can't just put like 10 lurkers up there, right? That's not how it's going to work. Uh, so it has all these kind of interesting things that block vision and don't do a lot else. It does make for... Okay, so this is a mix between... Uh, for Again, th looking through the Terran lens, uh, the, what this is going to do uh, really differently than... Let's look at Polypoid and Vermeer. Those are our standard four-player maps that we have right now. So if you take one of the expansions on Polypoid, it's on high ground. Okay, so you have these ramps and your opponent has to try to, let's say a Terran is trying to attack a Protoss expansion. The high ground expansions are very hard to kill, right? So they'll have cannons there. You have to like siege, scan. You have, might have to scan twice or three times to kill the cannons. Unsiege, move forward, siege again, right? It's very hard to clear. You can't just set it and forget it and kill it. You can't attack, move it. The high ground units will kill your army right? The, the high ground cannons will kill your army. So Polypoid is actually very hard to kill those high ground bases. But then you look at Vermeer, all the bases are low ground. Well, actually that's kind of too easy because Terran can just set up a couple siege tanks and it will kill everything, right? Maybe you have to move forward once because there's a, a cannon on the edge, but you don't need extra vision. You don't need to utilize scans or anything like that. It's straight. You can do things like attack move. So Vermeer, it makes it almost too easy and then polypoid too hard. This is right in between there. So you have the vision denial, but the cannons here are not on high ground. But what you can do is put the cannons close enough 
so that if a tank goes to the high ground position, right? Say you try to put a tank on that high ground position and it fires, the cannons will fire back and kill it because there's no room up there and you can't put many tanks up there. So if you want to kill a base like that, it's kind of in between the two different types of expansions we have right now where you can siege up out of range of the cannons. Put little C's there for the cannons. You can be out of range and use the scan and you're not going to miss shots, but you don't have the automatic vision. So uh, this is, it's really interesting because of that, I think. I think that that is a fascinating idea for a map. And obviously this, I'm using Terran vs. Protoss as a very simple example. People get to see it a lot. Uh, but this, this is in a lot of different ways, right? That this is going to be affecting it. Lurkers are involved, right? Like, I mean, any matchup, you're going to have different things that are similar to that. Uh, as far as the flow of the map goes, like I said, one, two, and three, if you want that gas, and this is probably going to be that third, there are multiple ways in, right? So let's say your opponent is over here. This is your opponent, right? So when they come out into the middle, it's like, okay, well, we could attack this way, could attack that way, right? So it's like, okay, well, where are we defending? Are you going to try to hold this area? Well, if you're holding that area as your quadrant, right? If you want to hold like a four base quadrant, like I was talking about before, your opponent can do this counterattack and come in this way, right? Kind of interesting. Also, uh, these are all high ground ridges around the bases here. And that makes coming in with shuttles or recalls or using carriers in these areas, very strong mutalisks, very strong in these areas. Uh, and then you have this for the main. Okay, so we have more high ground here, so you can't see things coming in right there. High ground here, so it's a little bit tough, but you'll probably be able to see it because you have things out in this general area. But a big part of it, you can actually see out and defend against things like shuttles, like overlord drops, like mutalisks flying in, you know, a, a drop, drop ships, whatever it may be. So this is a really fun and well-designed map, in my opinion. We don't know what the balance will look like yet, but it looks like they took a lot of things that are problems in each matchup and did something in between. So instead of high ground all around a base, which can be very annoying as a Terran player, right? Instead of having it all around, we only have it partially around, right? So we have big wide open areas. So it's like, okay, well, you can float your eBay here and you can float your racks here, right? And suddenly you have vision of everything around your base. Whereas if you look at other maps that have that kind of low ground main base with a wall around it, you have to float like six buildings to get all the vision. Uh, same would be like, you could put your, as Protoss, you could put your Corsairs here. Corsairs. Wow, I'm good at this. Uh, and you know, the Corsairs can hold this area and suddenly the Overlord drops are not gonna be able to just sneak in suddenly. Right, so I think this is an excellently well-designed map. Like, I'm I'm very excited about Citadel. Uh, I really hope it comes to the ladder. It just it looks fun. I've played it just a little tiny bit, uh, and it's cool. It's a good map. All right, and our last map for ASL season uh, season 17. This is Radeon. Okay, uh, and this one uh, was funded by AMD once again, similar to Vermeer. Okay, and you can see it is similar to Vermeer. So for those of you who don't know, Vermeer is considered one of the better maps that we've had. It's a very good four player map. And it, they basically had a bunch of pros work with a map maker to try to make something that was balanced and well playable in all matchups. So they came out with Vermeer. Uh, and Vermeer is very good. It, it felt like an upgrade from Polypoid. I think the numbers for Polypoid might actually be slightly better now that Vermeer has been out for a bit. But this is the same type of deal, right? So you see that kind of AMD logo in the center. They fund it. They they get the pro gamers, the map makers together, and, and there you go. We get we get a sick map for the season. Now, uh, this map is actually a lot like Vermeer, okay? Uh, but it's like a mix between Vermeer and Circuit Breakers, and I'm not saying that because it's a space tile set, right? Low-hanging fruit, yeah, space tile set. Wow, it must be, must be Circuit Breakers, no. Okay, let me show you how. So first off, let me show you, it's four player. One, two, three, four, okay? Uh, and let me show you what the layout of the bases is. So say you're spawning up here. There's your first base, your second base right down your ramp as always, and your third base is down here. 
So this type of layout looks like Vermeer, right? Where it's like the natural. Obviously, you always have to have a natural that's basically like this or the game breaks. And then it's like, okay, well, the third is pretty close. But basically, you move out and you're like, well, I can defend this area. But it can't just be this area because that's too strong. So we're also going to have to defend this area, right? Little bridge. Kind of similar to Vermeer like that. Vermeer has kind of a similar layout. Uh, now, how is this map? And you see, that's it's like that on each side, on, on, on each base, obviously, right? Um, and actually, one other thing I should point out is, right, so that's nine bases. And then we have two more, which is kind of funky, right? One, two. And those are just raised bases towards the center a little bit. So actually very easy uh, to move from the center to those bases. Like you basically have to have some sort of map control to be able to take those two bases. And that in and of itself is kind of interesting because I've I've talked a lot about uh, four player maps with 12 bases. That's three per per person. Not that anyone play, not four people never play one of those maps, but the idea is how many bases there are, right? Because that kind of, really alters how the game goes this is somewhere in between the 16 base and uh you know the 12 base right this is 14 bases we never really get maps like that so uh you know you have the three big quadrants of main bases with their double expos and then you have plus two more that are in the center that if you have map control can be taken obviously we see a ton of dead airspace behind them and that can allow, you know, movement between these different locations, but also attacking these bases in another way. These are very vulnerable bases is what I'm trying to say, uh, but they are there. So you can take them really, really interesting there. Uh, the other, But here's why it's kind of like circuit breakers as well. And it's again, not the space tile set. Uh, the thing that you'll notice is that this is not rotationally symmetric like most four player maps. Almost every four player map we get is rotationally symmetric. This is just left right symmetry, right? So look, the ramp this way, the ramp this way. Here, the ramp this way, the ramp this way. This changes the way that it plays quite a bit, right? So look at this. You have your like naturals facing each other's uh like the back of your natural facing your opponent's back of his natural. Oh my God, I just saw a face that I can't unsee. Oh my God, it's a lizard man on the map. No, I'll never unsee this. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, anyways, um... It, so uh, that is like Circuit Breakers. We don't get a lot of maps like that, right? Where it's it's like up, down, or left, right symmetry. It's normally rotational. Wow, that's a straight line. Uh, it's normal, normally rotationally symmetric, right? So there's like, it just, it, it plays a little bit different because of that. It feels very different based on where you spawn. Like, let's say that you spawn here and your opponent spawns here. Okay, well, it's it's a pretty close rush distance, but also you have an expansion in between your bases. How wild is that? Uh, the center is pretty wide open on this map. There are these little doodads, and I believe you can put units on them. I did not test this, but it looks to me like, excuse me, you could probably fit like a Hydra up there, probably not a siege tank. Uh, they're pretty small, but uh, it's actually important that those little doodads are there because when you get an area that's this wide open, it becomes really hard for Protoss to defeat Zerg. It becomes really hard for, uh, you know, a, a Terran to defeat Protoss, that type of thing, because the attack moving is so strong. Like you have such a wide army that it's really hard to make like your defensive flanks. But because of those doodads, you can kind of utilize them and the overall area that can be attacked it's like closed off a little bit, right? So that's gonna help a little bit. That's like an improvement over Circuit Breakers, but it's still very, very open there. Uh, so yeah, that's that's Radeon. It looks like a really good map to me as well. Um, and yeah, I think it's uh, it's gonna be a good season, ASL 17. Uh, Tasis and I, of course, will be casting it, so you can check that out. But hope you've enjoyed the map preview. There you go. <laughs>